You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. All right, we are excited to welcome, as I said at the top of the show, Sean Uehara, who with Loan Depot, he's a lender that works with our team. We do a lot of cool stuff together. As a matter of fact, it was fun, Sean, uh, being on your podcast the other uh, week. So I appreciate you coming on and doing the same here. So welcome. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. So I didn't get a chance to really do much of an introduction for you. So why don't you take a few minutes, just tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and how long you've been into the in the mortgage industry, and then we'll jump into some what the heck's happening uh, um, currently. I'm originally born and raised in uh, in, in Hawaii. So I, I grew up there, ended up leaving, going to college in Washington State, played basketball. I um, was a huge, huge sports fan. Obviously, you can see in the yeah. background here. Um, Love it. Played sports my whole life. So, you know, I think a lot of how I think and everything just kind of really ties back to, you know, sports and those long hours working out and, and in the gym and stuff like that. Um, I got into the mortgage business back in 2007. Um, I moved to Vegas right after I finished school and uh, got into the business by accident. I was actually mm-hmm. doing, um, I was actually working for a, a call center at the time. And that was when the credit markets were all falling apart. And I remember, you know, coming in on a Friday and our, our boss just firing everyone on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> and um, from that, it kind of led me to the mortgage business. So I went from, you know, one industry to the next that was getting just completely, you know, pummeled by, by the economy. Uh, but I had no idea what I was getting into. The guy I spoke to was like, yeah, you know, we'll hire you and give you 50% commission. I was like, shoot, that sounds good. I guess I'll take it. Um, so that kind of started my career and, um, you know, just kind of stuck it out, man. I never, never took a part-time job. Never did anything else. Just kind of suffered my way through, you know, really, and just kind of learned the business ever since. You know, and I, I got to say that athlete's work ethic really explains a lot about how watching you, how you do your business, because you're you're a grinder, man. You're a machine. You just like knock it out. You just are always thinking, which I think really got you inspired to do the podcast. You, your podcast. Let's talk a little bit about your podcast is all about being an entrepreneur, right? And sharing entrepreneurial stories and interviewing yeah. people, right? So we started the um, the self made podcast a few months ago. I think it was maybe you know February or so, um, but it was something you know on our our list that we wanted to start implementing as part of our business. Um, not necessarily to you know generate leads and anything like that, but it was more to kind of start creating a community of people that are in you know real estate and entrepreneurs that we can all learn and share from each other's growth mm-hmm. um, just because I feel you know there's there's a lot of competition you know out there but at the same time we all need and can learn from from each other right and still be able to grow your business and have those breakthroughs that I think we're all pushing for but sometimes we don't you know want to reach out to others or ask the question so maybe that was another platform that i felt like we could try to inspire you know other people to to go after you know whatever they're whatever's holding them back Mm -hmm. i love it and you've done you you do it weekly yeah we try to commit to do it weekly um now with this this shutdown you know we're doing a lot more so we're we're starting to release you know more content but ideally you know I, i try to give myself a goal of at least once a week to be able to put out some video um video and the podcast all right, we'll we put all that in the show notes over at WBNL Podcast. This is episode 114, so uh, we'll get all those links over there because people can get it on YouTube. They can also get it wherever they subscribe to a podcast, right? Yep. yep. All right, cool, like uh, Apple Apple Podcasts and so Apple, on. Apple, Spotify, and yeah, we got like probably three or four other ones too that we right. use. Right on, cool. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, what's happening right now as we record. You know, just give us an update on what's happening with overall the, the loan uh, mortgage industry as, as it's impacted by this coronavirus. Oh man, it's it's been a roller coaster ride here for the last yeah. uh, few weeks. But um, you know, initially the non QM market kind of was the first to get hit, and for a lot of people that may not know what that is, that's those are the type of loans that you you know you traditionally wouldn't find through you know like Fannie and Freddie. So mm-hmm. you're looking at um, loans that are your I-10 borrower, or you know they don't have a social. 
um, mm -hmm. maybe condo tail financing, uh, foreign nationals, mm -hmm. you know, and then some of the deals that we actually ran into uh, that we lost was, uh, you know, bank statement loans for self-employed borrowers or even stated income loans. So those type of out of the box and itchy type, you know, products were the first to get hit. Um, and it, it was very reminiscent of 2008 yeah. where, uh, you know, it was the morning of type thing. And, you know, the, the bank just came, came back and said, Hey, we're pulling the plug on these products. We don't care, uh, at what status you're in, you know, we're not doing anything for the next 30 days. So that was, you know, our kind of early, early indication, you know, of kind of what was happening. And since then, you know, every lender is responding a little differently. I mean, we've increased our, you know, FHA credit score requirement and our VA. So every every lender is re reacting a little differently, but I mean, we're still it's still there's still loans to be. Yeah, there's still loans that are closing. I mean, mm -hmm. even last month, um, our entire region had a record month. So you know, I don't. Can you dig a little bit deeper into FHA? So what generally it was about a what five eighty credit? We could actually go down to a five twenty. Okay. Yeah, FHA and VA, we could go as low as a 520. And what are you seeing right now? Like now maybe our back. FHA is at a 620 right. and VA has gone to a 680. Wow. Okay. So FHA is still, I mean, in my opinion, still reasonable, you know, because okay. here in Las Vegas, right, there was the home is possible and then the hope brings you home, which mm -hmm. both required higher credit scores. Mm hmm. Um, so, you know, there was a few realtors that I talked to that were kind of freaking out about, you know, the 620, but you know, when you look at it, you know, for the most part, people were selling the home as possible and, and the other, uh, the, brings you home. yeah, and they both had higher credit score requirements. So from a credit standpoint, it's still, you know, a, a feasible, you know, requirement to to work with it's not like it's gonna you know truly slow us down to where you can't get deals done well and a strategy that i know you work with with your realtors too is let's talk to the borrower about what they have to do it's not impossible to move the credit score up 20 30 40 points with certain strategies and so forth it may take a little time depends on each borrower right yeah so all that is part about long-term pipeline counseling them st reasons to have them get into conversations with with us right so yep. and i think i think that's a big thing too like you said you know the pipeline piece because you know hey if they can't buy today um obviously we don't know how long this you know the shutdown lasts hopefully it's just 30 days mm -hmm. um but hey that could be a client that could be yours in you know 45 mm -hmm. days from now that's so exactly right. even though you don't get the deal today uh managing your pipeline managing your crm your database i mean you know, these guys could obviously purchase, you know, down the road and who knows what happens to guidelines three months from now, right? We could go back to a 580, we could go back to a 520, mm -hmm. whatever that ends up loosening up and, you know, you'll, you'll get the business back. Yeah. And you know what, your company, Loan Depot, I've seen a couple really good live streams and things that they've been doing at the high level where it gets into the details of the mortgage industry, which can get lost on a lot of people, but it's important to stay informed. But, you know, I think that's pretty cool. I've watched a couple actually. Yeah. Um, our CEO, Anthony, went, you know, he was on uh, Cavuto Coast to Coast yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, he's gone. He's done a few things with Barry Habib, who's, you know, yeah. a mortgage, you know, really legend, if you want to look at him mm -hmm. like that. Uh, and they get really detailed, you know, with what's going on, what's happening to the market. So it, it's it's refreshing, you know, to be with a company that, you know, our CEO is kind of in the forefront, you know, making some comments and really trying to give people, you know, some peace of mind. And, you know, our biggest thing right now that he's been talking about is <clears throat> you have a hashtag better together, you know, and it's not to, you know, put down other companies or, you know, really exploit the fact that, hey, you know, these guys aren't doing down payment assistance or anything, but it's like, hey, we we all need to work together, you know, to get through this. So, you know, that that feeling right there is what's interesting always about Las Vegas, because, you know, you got into this, your business, the industry, the mortgage side, right in the total worst possible time <laughs> to get in. So you've already built a business in that <clears throat> worst downturn, in my opinion. So you've seen what it takes, but you know that Vegas has this thing about finding a way and, you know, that the hashtag about, you know, together, you know, we're, whatever we're doing or Vegas stronger even now, because I'm hearing the same thing about the casino industry. And it's not about competition right now. It's about everybody working together, because if one of the big guys goes down, it hurts all of them. So there's yeah. a lot of that happening 
here to help us get whenever we can get it all back and and, and moved back up it'll you know we'll get into some but honestly don't you think it's going to be a kind of a new normal anyway it's not we're never going to go back to exactly how it was it's yeah be something yeah. in between right but do you feel good about right now like your pipeline your business you, you just kind of went through some of the issues right now on the non-qm but when it comes to freddie fanny normal conforming loans uh, fha and va you're just talking about a little bit of a higher credit score it's still pretty good as far as people you know so what's the issue that you're probably seeing is deals in the pipeline that you had with people that are uh been furloughed how how, how are you handling that you um, know is that an issue of uh, uh, verification of employment stuff like that yeah instead of doing our traditional verifications right now we're doing uh, we're allowing you know uh verbals to be done so, you know, Fannie and Freddie, they're coming out with new guidelines and, you know, it's kind of one of those things we just take it day by day and, you know, whatever their guidance is, is kind of what we go off of, which is reassuring, um, you know, because I have, you don't want to be with a company that is going to put additional overlays with what's going on right now, or, you know, if their underwriting team isn't comfortable with certain things, because, that can be deal killers, right? Mm -hmm. And it, that's going to be things that probably come up late in the game. And it's not going to be anything that you know up front. So um, to be with a company right now, that's, you know, very, very solid. Um, and like I said, you know, we're in the forefront, you know, making comments and um, going on TV. It, mm -hmm. It's it's very, very reassuring. It gives us the confidence to work with our agents, right? Very and nice. let them know that we can get deals done because I did a... I did a call with another broker the other day and, you know, he had, he had brought up the fact that some of his agents were working with these dot com lenders or the online guys. And he said that they lost, I think it was like five deals mm. and it was literally, you know, they weren't returning phone calls and nothing, you know, right. so his whole message was how important the relationship is today with, you know, a reputable lender, someone mm. that you can trust um, because you, you know, it makes it even tougher today, right? For you guys to do your job with the whole shutdown, especially with the governor making his comments about open houses and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so if you get a deal in escrow, we got to make sure that we can perform. You that's know, right. that's the last thing we want to have is, you know, a deal falling out in the 11th hour because, uh, because of income or employment or something that, you know, it's a little quirky today. Yeah. And you know what? I, I, I think it's just about adapting, but the point you just made is important. Not just even now, it's always important about having a great relationship with your lender who, you know, who you're working with so you can get the deals done. So that's great, great comment. I, I must talk to my agents about that all the time. Uh, Cause that becomes the heartache and it's, and you're messing it up for everyone, not just the borrower, but the seller, everybody involved in the transaction when you're not working with somebody that you really know is going to be there for you. I, I agree that, you know, I don't want to trash the total online thing but there is an, an easy side for them on the other side to kind of just disappear because there is no connection as much as yep. if you and me having a conversation talking to our borrower so great yeah. stuff and, and that and that model works right for for some borrowers mm -hmm. uh that might have you know really good credit very easy income right they right. might have one job they've been there 10 years they have no other rental property and it's a very straightforward loan and you know what the average person could could throw that down and put it put them into a deal, but I always tell the agents we work with, you know, it's not always about the rate, and I think that's kind of the misconception that a lot of uh, borrowers, when we search for you know mortgages and and lenders, that's all they care about is you know what's your rating, yeah. fee? what's your rating fee, that's right. um, but yet that guy could literally be two weeks onto onto the job with a call center, yep, you know he might have closed two deals, and you're gonna go with this guy because of you have no idea on his background, right? So I always try to get them to understand that sometimes the strategy can can outweigh the rate, you know? So anyone yeah. can get you a low rate, but, you know, what's the strategy, right? What's going to be the long-term plan? How long do you plan on staying in the house that, um, you know, we can try to help them with some mortgage options versus just here's a 30-year fix, yeah. take it or leave it kind of thing. Exactly. It's that personal touch. And I agree. Let's switch gears as we kind of finish up here regarding the cool things that you're always doing. And I applaud you for being that guy that's out there helping the realtors that you're working with education wise. And, and you know, we're, we got something coming up with you to do to do an online seminar. And But I always see you doing things like because you're really 
cutting edge with your team. You've taken the investment to have people hire people to help you with video and all that. So I want to talk a little bit about that because I really appreciate what you do to help people embrace what they need to do these days ar around technology, social and all that. Yeah. Um, I was always kind of just, you know, I had my team. We, we just did our loans. You know, I was never, I never bothered anybody in any of my branches. <laughs> I was the <laughs> guy like, just sit me in the back and mm -hmm. just let me do my loans and, you know, don't bother me kind of thing. But, um, you know, a few companies ago, I got asked to, you know, run the branch. So for me, that was kind of a point in my career that I felt like, okay, well, if I'm going to run the branch, I kind of got to be an example for everybody else, you know, and I can't just come and go as I please and, you know, do my own thing. So that was kind of a commitment I made to myself that, all right, I got to kind of buckle down a little bit. Um, and in during that, you know, transition, there was, uh, you know, I, I don't know why I got into this, but I really started like listening to Gary V and oh, yeah. Don and those guys um, and really just said, okay, look, I got to figure out this social media thing. Cause I was one of those people that really it was more of a private thing. You know, it was for my friends, family, and mm -hmm. you know, I, I really didn't use it for business. You know, and this was probably two years ago, three years ago. Um, but I said, you know, the hell with this. I, I'm, I'm going to go all in. So started to figure out the whole, <clears throat> you know, getting online, getting social, Facebook, Instagram, you know, doing a website, um, running ads and all that stuff. So it started with that. And then video. Video was kind of the next step for me. Um, again, I was one of those guys. Don't take I hate taking pictures even to this day. <laughs> You know, my, my daughter's the same way. It's like trying to get us to take pictures. We're like, oh, my God, it's like pulling teeth. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, so video for me was kind of kind of a huge mountain to climb. But, I mean, I ended up hot, I found my videographer and I would pay him, you know, per per event that we would do. And I just committed to doing that um, every month. So fast forward to today, you know, he's Leo. He's on my team. He's great. But, you know, it's been a good year that we've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes that mm -hmm. people probably don't know about just because now we do a lot more stuff, you know, online. <clears throat> um, and really, it was just biting the bullet, you know, and just realizing the power of social media. Um, you know, I like I said, I never paid for business. That was just not my model. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it never was until a few years ago. And, you know, now it's, you know, from last year to this year, I mean, we, we tripled our production, uh, from last year until this year, first quarter. So, um, the proof's in the pudding, right? It, right. it works. I know it works. So kind of going back to the whole podcasting and everything else. So I was like, look, if I know I can generate these leads, you know, I want to try to help the agents generate business too. Because um, more often than not, you know, most lenders and, you know, I, I was the same way. We always call agents for business and obviously agents get frustrated with that mm -hmm. because they feel like all we do is ask for business mm -hmm. and we don't give anything in return. Um, so I kind of wanted to flip that model around and kind of get rid of that stigma um, and really try to find agents to partner with and really work on, you know, things together to be able to generate business where it's not just they may feel that I'm taking from them. Um, you know, cause last year we, I gave away 50 transactions to, to our partners we work with. So, you know, for me, it's, it's about the partnership. It's not yeah. about, you know, Hey, can you pay for my leads or can you do this for me? Um, cause I feel like those types of relationships, you know, they, they never work out cause it's always just about, Hey, if you can't, yeah. if you're not going to pay this, I'll go find the next guy That's to right. do it. Man, that is such a powerful thing you're saying, because then it becomes, you're helping coach, be a coach, be a consultant, help them share what it is you're doing. And I appreciate you saying, cause this is the thing I run into. I long ago embraced all this stuff and I hated the whole, like how I sounded and looked on the video. And then I'm like, look, you just got to embrace it. This is what, if you go meet somebody in person, this is what you look like. Yep. Stop worrying about it. Just go for it. Be yourself. And if you don't like how you're looking or whatever, work on that, right? That might be some motivation for you, but yep. you did it, right? Is that your best advice on that? Just do it. And then all of a sudden you got more comfortable with it or are you still a little uncomfortable with it? For me personally, I'm just the type of person that whatever it is, right. I'm, I'm going to do it. I mean, I think that just goes back to my, you know, playing sports my whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad used to wake me up 
on Saturday mornings at 5 a.m. to work out ever since I was 10 years old. You know, I hated doing it, but no matter what those things were, I mean, I always just kind of pushed through. I've always did it. I, I mean, I get we all have our bad days, but um, I don't know. I, I guess it's just the com- the, the competitor mm-hmm. in me. You know, mm-hmm. I just feel like if I'm not doing it, someone else will. And, you know, there's no way I'm going to let someone else outwork me. I love so, that. That's you know, exactly it, why you do so well, my friend, no matter what I, you choose to do I next. Like you just got to do it, you know. And right on. So now when we talk to agents, I try to find out, you know, what's holding them back because um, not everyone's going to tick like me. Right. And just mm-hmm. kind of you throw me out there, I'll figure it out. And that's kind of what I've done my whole career. But, you know, figuring out what's what's the limiting belief. And I think more often than not. Right. It's 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 ourself. Mm-hmm. It's not anything else that, you know, because we all know what we should do every day, mm-hmm. but we don't do it. A hundred percent, man. That is it. A hundred percent. So what you do, and it, have you found in this time of being a little, you know, working from home and all that, what has changed for you most? Is there anything that's changed or is it, you know, have you done some self-reflection? Because I think a lot of people are really either all in figuring out how do I adjust? And, and then I feel like there's a whole bunch of people to your point that are just like, I don't even know what they're doing. Yeah. You know, like, where are you? What's up? And they're allowing it to overtake them versus taking charge. Do you feel the same? Um, I Do you mean, see prior, that? Or? Yeah. Pr- and prior to Lone Depot, you know, I was at a, a couple of companies that I actually worked from home. Mm-hmm. So we didn't, we had an office, but I never went to the office. So you're used to it. Me, I'm used to, to the, you know, to this environment. Uh, I mean, I miss being in the office, miss being around the team, you know, and the camaraderie you get with everybody. But we're still, you know, me and Leo and our team, you know, we still, uh, we have Thursday happy hours. So we jump on a Zoom call. So yeah. we still interact with everybody. Um, but I feel like right now, you know, one thing that I kind of had on my to-do list was Facebook Lives um, and really trying to incorporate that with our business. Right. Um, so, you know, shutdown happens. And we go into fast forward mode, you know, that what that went from maybe being, you know, fourth, fifth on the list to like, let's make it happen. Hey, next Thursday, we're going live and we'll figure this out, you know, so we uh, we're still trying to work through, you know, the kinks. But I mean, mm-hmm. at this point, I could care less, you know, what we sound like, what we look like. It's the first few, you know, mm-hmm. ones that we've done and no one might, no one might even watch it anyway. So. Right. Yeah. And that's a great point. And then you just have to start putting the content out there, right? You just start doing, and it's interesting what happens. So last thing here, and I, I really do along the lines of education, I I'm such a proponent of all of this. I've been talking, coaching through my coaching company, through our, our real estate company, through these podcasts is to, to embrace all this and to get into the video. And now more than ever, it's, it's critical. I feel to switch gears and be able to have and build relationships with people and buyers and sellers and so forth. So to that end, we're, we're going to test a a, a Facebook live as a buyer seminar, right? On Saturday. So we'll see how that goes. And it's all about promotion and, and handling that. But I really think people, the consumer wants information. People are home. This is the cool part because the people I have around me, the agents that are working, that are picking up the phone and making phone calls and calling leads and it's continuing right now. Advertising on Facebook is cheaper. Oh, yeah. um, you know, so there's opportunities because people are at home and they're scrolling through their Facebook, whether or not they're thinking about getting a loan or looking at a house. If you have quality advertising, they may engage with you because we're having that happen on our team right now. And the ones that are picking up the phone and making calls, they're having these great conversations and they can jump into a Zoom. Now they're meeting each other or like what we're going to do this weekend is let's see how many people we can get together in a Zoom and answer their questions because they have questions. Is now the right time to buy? What's yeah. happening? Should I wait? This is what everyone wants to know. And you as a professional listening, you have an opportunity to stay on top of the statistics, partner with your lender, anyone else and educate people, right? And yeah. You're doing that. So well I done. Think, and we're looking forward to see what we, what comes of all that in the coming. Yeah. Year. I think the biggest thing, you know, the consumer, like you said, right, they're at home. Um, so if now, you know, if you were trying to run ads, now would be the time, but not, you're not really running ads for business. I feel, you know, it's more of trying to get more exposure for yourself. Mm-hmm. Branding, um, right? Everyone that's you talking yeah, to is about how you could brand yourself and stand out right now. Absolutely. As the one like who cares. Said, everyone's at home. Mm-hmm. They're bored out of their minds. They're probably on social media. Um, so 
you know, give them the reassurance, give them the information that they're looking for and, and not so much statistical stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Cause I always feel like, you know, when agent, you know, when we share that type of information, it's very few, right. People that are going to be yeah. that analytical that can digest it and say, oh, okay, I understand what this means. Let's, I'm going to make my decision, but rather, you know, I think right now it's about humanizing what we do, you know, Good. and really uh, being reassuring, you know, Hey, did you, you know, are you impacted by this? You know, are you still working kind of thing versus, Hey, are you trying to sell your house? You mm -hmm. know, because I think the, the people that put out information today, like you said, that are calling, having good conversations um, and being there for your, for your clients. Right. I think those are the guys that are going to win when all this, the new normal comes back and they'll remember mm -hmm that you called me, you talked to me about my house and it wasn't just, Hey, let's try to get up your listing up now. And it's more, you know, you're just being a friend really at the end of the day. Yeah. You're caring and what's really going on and build that relationship and be there for them. Because whether it's now or later, if you come from that place and it's not like, Hey, I'm calling to see if you need to buy or sell your house because you know, I need to get some money. If yep. that comes across, then that is forget it. Uh, and that's the way we should do our business all the way, all the all the time anyway. And and it's just intriguing the conversations that agents that are working with us are having. I'm so happy to hear it that that they want. They're actually, of course, generally people have a hard time getting them to pick up the phone or to respond because everybody's so busy. So right now is a perfect time to even just reach out to your own database. Forget oh, yeah. leads. Just pick up the phone to the people that you know and pick up the phone. Everybody, yeah. it's not text or an email pick up the phone and go hey sean it's janice was i'm just calling all my previous clients and checking in with everybody how's it going for you how you doing at home right that kind of conversation like that was the, that was the one of the first things i told our branch you know that hey because we had a couple of new people on our team and you know they they've been in the business less than a year and i said look go back and call every single client i don't care mm -hmm. if you you know you guys are tight or not or anything call every person just to check on them because you know you you want to be again that that voice of reason right and again it's I, you go back to the crash and how much the media can spin things and you know yep. misinterpret what's really going on in the market that you can then at least give them some information or you know what maybe the client needs to vent right and you right. can just kind of be that sounding board and you know reassure them and who knows right they might have a friend or family member that they could then refer you because you took the time to talk to them right. um you know and kind of help them out well inevitably in that conversation comes up how's the market what's going on and oh, there's yeah, an opportunity the or we've been thinking about taking you know selling so we can get the equity of our house or buying and taking advantage those conversations come up naturally instead of you trying to st lead with that come from concern care which is what we really this is how we do our business anyway it's all about relationships so cool so sean last thing what's the easiest way i have all your information in our show notes this is episode 114 wbnlpodcast.com but if do you have like a website or easy place for people to just go find you yeah they can uh go to a website it's just sean um, that's u a u y e h a r a yeah. <laughs> s e a n sean yeah, yeah web, website or you know people can text me on my cell you know 702-336-4980 i mean i i always respond to everybody yeah. so either You're way good. works good man all right thank you for your time i know you got lots going on still being in your your awesome home office sports fan i love it <laughs> Uh, and we'll see you soon. Okay. We'll, we'll, All right. be, we'll see how we do this weekend and we'll uh, keep doing some business together because that's what we do. All right. Absolutely. Thanks, Jack. All right. All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye.